This is a 49 inch monitor, the AOC AG 49.3 UCX. I have a 49 inch monitor at my desk. They're awesome. This one is a lot cheaper. Let's check it out. Now, if you're not familiar with 49 inch monitors, you should know that their aspect ratio is 32 by nine. Compare that to an ultra wide monitor, which has an aspect ratio of 21 by nine. Some people call them dual QHD because it's like having two 27 inch QHD monitors. But in practice, it feels more like having enough space for four windows side by side. Inside the box, we've got the panel and you can see this puppy is curved. An 1800R curve. That's a tighter curve than a circle with a radius of 3.8 meters, like you would find on the Dell that's on my desk. Oh God. Ah! Don't keep this in. Man, do they ever wrap that up. Is everyone's gonna look like this or is mine the special demo unit that's been used a few times? Cause this is crazy. They use so much tape on here, I'm scared I'm gonna have to cut into the stand. I'm starting to wonder if I even need a stand. The thing with a monitor this size is that they're really big and they can go out really far onto your desk. And that's a problem because with a monitor this big, you need a deep desk. So if the legs protrude even farther into your desk, then you, suddenly you don't have enough room for your keyboard and all sorts of problems. So discreet stand is important. Not too gamery, it's not too corporate, it's just kind of fine. Also in the box, we have a remote, which is pretty awesome if you decide to use this thing like a TV putting some screws, power cable, and a USB. This will be for the IO hub on the back of the monitor with multiple USB ports that you can plug other stuff in. HDMI cable, and even a display port cable. The display port helps you get the most out of that kind of display. Ugh. The stand is keyed like this, so you just slide the top in first, drop it in. There's no screwdriver included. Not quite as easy as a completely toolless design, but hey, Four screws ain't bad. Oh, a Vigisora So we have tilt, elevation, and note that it goes quite low, which is nice. Do we have swivel? Yes, and sometimes they give you a bit of rotation, but this one does not. It's powered on, shall we? There's no external power brick. Two HDMI 2.0 ports, two DisplayPort ports. Uh, this is the USB port. These are USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is the five gigabyte per second type. There's also a USB type C port here, you can plug your laptop in and charge the laptop. Look, my laptop's charging. Oh, there's a headphone jack there, missed. I thought there was an ethernet port somewhere. The USB-C port actually supports 65 watts of power delivery in addition to DisplayPort alternate mode. This remote actually has kind of nice tactile feedback. That's actually a lot better than I anticipated. Now, as I stand here and look even at this black screen, I can already see being at an extreme viewing angle alters the look. VA panels are known for their deep blacks, but less than great viewing angles compared to IPS type LCDs. Now you can see we have the on-screen display accessible here. What's inside there? Game settings, luminance, color setup, OSD setup, extra, image setup, and volume because there are two five watt speakers in this puppy. It appears that our monitor is just refreshing at 60 hertz right now. 100 and 120, I'm gonna hit 120. This monitor is pretty impressive considering the resolution is not 3840 by 1080, it's 5120 by 1440. Even though it is like 7 million pixels, it's still easier to drive than just a normal 16 by nine 4K monitor, which has about a million pixels more. But I'm gonna see if I can overclock it maybe to 144. Uh, nope. <laughs> Who cares, 120 is pretty high. Let's uh, play a game. Now, if you're trying to make the decision of whether or not this aspect ratio and this size of monitor is right for you and you're a gamer, more and more games are built for these aspect ratios. You can really go as wide as you want and the HUD will stay in the middle and the rest will just extrude off to the side and just give you more and more peripheral vision without making the game harder to play. Some games don't work at all. Some games like this one are kind of in the middle where things on the peripheral of the screen will look like they're closer to me than they actually are. And then of course the HUD elements are way off to the side. So you kind of have to glance farther than you'd like. When it comes to overdrive settings, you can actually get additional artifacts if you put it on too high. So I'm gonna see what we get from that. This monitor is advertised as having a one millisecond pixel response time. I'm seeing maybe some Coronas on the leading edges of these things. Generally speaking, overdrive should be set to medium. Well, this is definitely playable and the colors don't look brutal. They're not oversaturated or anything like that. This is a thousand bucks. I think for the price, this is a pretty good monitor. Now you can spend a thousand dollars and get a Samsung like the CHG90, 
but that one is only 1080p at 144 hertz. There's even cheaper options out there than that. But if you need 1440p, this is as cheap as it gets. And the other 1440p models out there are usually 60 hertz. So this thing's kind of awesome. Now those ones are 10 bit panels instead of 8 bit panels, so they're gonna have better color, but they're not even better in every respect. Even aside from resolution, when it comes to HDR, I wouldn't go for this. It is edge lit, as I could see when I first turned it on, and it's not bright enough, but it's plenty bright enough to game an SDR. One last thing to know about this monitor that's pretty cool is that even though it's priced kind of entry level for this category, it's on AOC's premium flagship Agnon line. So it's backed by their respawn warranty, which is kind of badass. They'll give you a free replacement monitor if you do any kind of accidental damage to it. They will also give you a new monitor if there's any dead pixels. And that's really important because with budget brands, there's a high percentage of customers who get kind of a lemon, but you don't have to worry about that because if you get any dead pixels whatsoever, they're gonna give you a new monitor. And even better, they will ship you the new one while they wait for your old one. That's pretty awesome, and I don't think you're gonna get that from any other entry-level devices, as it were. So check them out in the link below, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this channel, subscribe. Hit us up in the comments with products that you'd like us to cover in the future.